What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters and you are watching the Car Passion Channel, the place where I teach you how to make your Miata faster than all your friends' cars. Now today it's time to bust out that wallet because I'm going to be showing you something that you've never heard of before, but by the end of this video, you're probably going to want it. So in the midst of the drivetrain swap on the Miata, I'm also installing an NB subframe. And how silly would I be to not replace my 217,000 mile control arm bushings in the process? <laughs> Oh yeah, boys. I got myself a set of energy suspension control arm bushings. The complete master set for ultimate street cred. So what's the hype surrounding polyurethane bushings and why wouldn't you just go stock again? Well, polyurethane bushings are relatively cheap, they're very easy to install, and they're a lot stiffer than stock. And we all know Miata drivers love a little extra stiffness. But they have a couple drawbacks. Even if you do install grease fittings with your poly bushings, they still tend to squeak. The squeak. So this is bad for two reasons. Number one, squeaking equals less street cred. But the big reason is the binding that's causing the squeaking is actually effectively changing the spring rates of your suspension and it can make it less predictable and basically just not handle as well. But lucky for all of us Miata enthusiasts, there is a fix for this problem. First, let's take a look at a stock control arm bushing. You've got a sleeve through the center and it's bonded to this outer rubber part. And when the control arm moves, the bolt pinches this sleeve and the rubber has to flex in order for the control arm to pivot. With the polyurethane bushings, you've got two halves that slide into the control arm and then you have a metal sleeve that goes through the bushings. So your end product is like this, but inside of the control arm. Now the bolt still pinches the sleeve, just like with a stock bushing, except the bushings now rotate around the pin. And that's what is all fine and dandy at first when you first grease them, but eventually that grease gets cleared out and even with the grease fittings, usually it can't keep up and you'll eventually get binding and squeaking. And that's where the old Sad Fab bronze bearing retrofit kit comes into play. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Hope I didn't lose that. What? What? Did they include this with all the kits or is this? Oh my god. Here. Let me start by saying this video is not sponsored by Sad Fab. I just really believe in what these guys do. They're just a few engineers that are taking the Miata aftermarket and just making it a little bit better. What's included with the kit is a set of sleeves similar to what comes with the original bushing kit, except they're machined to a smaller diameter and they include sleeve bearings. So I'll be installing the bearings and then when the sleeves are inside of the polyurethane bushings, the control arm will be able to freely float around. Four of the bushings do have to be drilled to a slightly larger diameter for this kit to work, but with the purchase price of the kit, you just send your existing energy suspension bushings to Sad Fab and they drill them out for you. They also include a full set of grease fittings, which is not included with the energy suspension kit. The awesome part about this kit is that it eliminates the main drawback of upgrading to polyurethane bushings. The downside is this kit does cost about as much as the polyurethane kit. So you are doubling the cost of your upgrade, but you just have to make that decision based on what you're doing with the car and how serious it is. Plenty of people rock the polyurethane bushing kit out of the box and are very happy with it. Now, even though the VVT Beast has over 400 horsepower, I've always been very focused on handling. So for me personally, it was worth the cost to get that little extra performance edge. Now, the first step in installing this set is the most dreaded part of all, and that's removing the stock bushings, the part everyone is afraid of. But don't forget, you're on the Car Passion channel, and I'm here to make it as easy as possible for you guys. So let's get started. Here we've got our stock control arm. Also, another thing about stock bushings, See how this thing, there's a lip here, but the lip here is like pushed in. That entire bushing has shifted over from either the amount of power or just the age of the bushing. That's another disadvantage to the stock units. They can actually slide around in the bores, which is just not good for like alignment and anything. The first step here is to take your Cletus inspired razor blade and just cut off a little part of this rubber lip And what that does is it gives you a little lip for your two jaw pullers to get in there and press that bushing out. 
I'm gonna show you guys how to get your bushings out without burning your house down or getting the fire department called. And the magic tool here is this guy. It's a nice, good quality two jaw puller. I assume you could probably rent it on the uh, AutoZone program, but they're also not that expensive and it's not a bad tool to have. After you have the lip cut, go to the other side of the bushing and just put like a junk bolt and washer into your metal sleeve. That's gonna give something for the two jaw puller to push on and be able to extract that bushing. Now I'll just set up my puller, grab onto the lip, the control arm on the other side. Now I'll crank down the puller and hopefully this bushing slides right out. Now the reason I say hopefully is because some bushings do come out easier than other ones. It seems to be completely random. So if you do get one that's really stuck, I'll show you a pro tip on how to get it out. Now, like I said, some of these things come out a lot easier than others. The one in my rear hub actually just came out by hand. Now, for some reason, my rear lower control arms, all the bushings are absolutely stuck in there. I got my ratchet on this thing and I can just crank it. And the farthest I can get it to go is just a few millimeters out of the bore. But thankfully, there's a quick and easy solution. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said we weren't gonna have to burn our houses down to do this mod. Now, hold on. There's a big difference between what I'm gonna show you how to do right here and what this guy's doing. Okay, so let me explain. All I need to do is get a little bit of heat on the outside of this control arm. It'll expand a little bit and it will also slightly melt the outer surface of rubber on the bushing letting it slide out like butter. Your next step is to drill the arms for the grease fittings. Now each location of each arm has a specific place that you need to put the grease fitting so it's accessible to a grease gun and so it clears the subframe, etc. when the arm is actuating. For the rear lower control arm outer sleeves, you want to drill so that the grease fitting faces directly outwards. It'll give you the best access to it. Before you drill, you have to find the exact center of the sleeve. So that mark is directly in the center of the arm. Give it a punch. And tap in those threads. Figure out which bushing goes in each part of the arm. They actually include a really nice instruction kit that gives you a number corresponding to each part of the arm. And then on the inside of each bushing, there's a matching number. I'll take my new machined sleeve from my rear lower control arm outer packet. Slide the bearing into the sleeve. And now I know these bushings press in by hand when they don't have a bearing inside of them, but it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult. Actually, not bad, they go right in. And then take your newly machined Sad Fab sleeve. slide it through the bearings. I honestly think this is a genius idea and I'm super stoked to have it on the Miata. Now in the case that these bushings don't press into your control arm as easily as mine just went in, I use a set of these washers that come with the energy suspension kit and I put them inside one of these C-clamps. These things are like 10 bucks at Home Depot and I kind of make my own tool 
and I use the C-clamp to press the bushings in. And they're, they're never gonna be that difficult, but you might struggle a little bit to do it by hand. If you use this method right here, it might give you the extra umph you need to get them in. So those are all the basic techniques you need in order to install the bushing kit in your car. Now, if you're doing the poly bushings by themselves, it's a little bit more simple, but if you are doing the poly bushings with the sad fab kit, there are some specific details like where to place washers and when to use the different length grease fittings. So I've included a link below in the description to my website that's got a ton more information than what I've covered in this video, as well as some links that'll help you along the way. Even if you guys are just shopping around, trying to figure out what bushing kit you want to buy, for your Miata, I've got some information down below for that as well. Now I've got an absolute ton of bushings to install so I can get this rear subframe put back together and in the car, so I'm gonna get back to work. All right, I got all of my rear arms done, all drilled, all tapped, and also did the hubs. So the entire rear of the car is now finished. It is just after midnight. And I gotta get up for work tomorrow at about six o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna call it quits for now. I'd say that took the better part of maybe four or five hours. That's just the rear of the car and obviously it was already taken apart. If you're gonna do your entire car at once, I give yourself a full weekend, two whole days. You never know what you're gonna get hung up on. Obviously the better tools you have, the easier the job is gonna be, but definitely plan on having the car down for two days. Difficulty wise, I'd say if you can drill an oil pan for turbo, if you can install a set of coilovers, if you can install a roll bar, you can do this job. It's not that difficult. You'll find links to almost all the products and tools I use in this video in that top link in the description. And guys, that is all I have for you this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it. We are in crunch time trying to make it to Laguna Sega this year. I will see you guys very soon. Peace out.